Incoming transmission. Greetings everybody, Irish Trekkie back with another Star Trek Discovery, the official Starships collection from our friends over at Eagle Moss here, Collector. This is the bigger version of the USS Shenzhou NCC-1227, made famous by the awesome show that is Star Trek Discovery. Um, recent videos would have seen the larger version of the Star Trek uh, Discovery, USS Discovery. So do check out that video, as well as a plethora of other Star Trek reviews. But I'm looking forward to getting into this pretty freaking big box. The Discovery was obviously naturally long, but it wasn't as wide as this. Um, I do have the Discovery Collection version of this, the kind of regular size. Um, but people who have been watching these videos for years and years, you know, the Discovery Collection ships are that bit larger than the regular version Star Trek ships that we have uh, reviewed in the past as well. So um, really looking forward to this. Um, thanks for your support in checking out the video. You folks make this all possible. And as well as that, big shout out to Hero Collector sending this over. Gives me the opportunity to do a review for you folks. Uh, but again, my thoughts and opinions remain my own throughout. So without much ado about waffle, <laughs> which I tend to do quite often, uh, let's just get straight into it, shall we? Again, all the links down below uh, for the Hero Collector page, as well as fan groups and uh, social media links. So here we have our more traditional size Star Trek Discovery uh, magazine. So again, this is in the Star Trek, the official Starships collection um, type of magazine. So USS Shenzhou, special issue, class Walker, launched 23rd century, 423.37 meters, captained by Jojo. So we'll swing back around to that a little bit later on. So let's get a first look at this. The aero board is not wanting to, there we go. I'm saying I wasn't wanting to separate. Uh, very, it's quite big actually in comparison to the smaller version. Hmm, interesting. Uh, here we have our plate. 1700, oh my gosh, that is the closest. That is the closest I've ever gotten, I think, to 1701 A slash A. Uh, that's pretty awesome. Uh, aft mounted. Pretty decent size uh, mount on this as well. I was like to try and get that in as much as I can. So that's going to go into the aft off the ship. So uh, first reaction, and we're going to get some nice close-ups on this is uh, it's it looks very nice now unlike some of the previous ships this does look like to have a little bit more detail in it than it's a smaller comparison which i'm digging i was aware of this issue so let's get straight to it you have uh the terran empire emblem on this which is a freaking shame it's not the mirror universe shenzhou it's the uh prime <laughs> universe version uss it's not iss so a little bit of a quality faux pas on that one but uh listen let's eat our frog first and foremost in this video shall we we can call it out uh quality control listen uh you shouldn't have got your bonus if you get bonuses i don't know you missed it but anyway Let's push this hideous backdrop to one side and we get some lovely close-ups of the, the Shenzhou, shall we? Right, so here we have the Shenzhou. So let's get a close pass on this. So the detail is actually very, very nice. You have a lot of detail on the deflector array right here. And again, we saw these hatches being used early on in season one. Nice sculpt and this, there's kind of a, I don't know if you can kind of see that patterning just underneath that red band there. It's actually quite nice. Very clear registry. Windows don't look molded on the outer ring. They are molded on the inner ring. The alignment is it's pretty good. Paint applications are very nice. Die cast. 
plastic so very it's cool to the touch you can you can definitely know where the die cast is there uh nice line work nice fine paint applications as well your impulse sections have plastic inserts you have your shuttle bay here pylons lovely geometry around the pylons here as well and you have some more windows pretty 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 good pretty decent alignment again your nacelles nicely sculpted again big fail on the registry there a little bit bland just on the front of it but the seams are very nicely hidden and very clean tapering off just like the discovery and uh, we do have plastic inserts kind of looks like you can kind of see i don't know if it's coming through in this video but it's i can see the light coming in from this side coming through a lot of nice detailing i'm clipping over this way now <laughs> my ocd uh a little bit of a scuff just on the ventral registry here but again you have your aztec and nice paint apps good modeling on that beautifully detailed beautifully detailed bridge actually there you have that pattern that we have on the dorsal side very clean ventral section i love that bridge is fab it would have been nice if there was a little bit of a graphic of the honeycomb but that when you look at that it's it's very kind of tos as well just that kind of stark white so i gave them that this is a fab model very nicely done on the seam line i like that and the deflector dish is really good yeah overall this is a really nice model a little bit of a blemish there on the sculpt maybe more the paint than this than the sculpt and then your dorsal fins here very nice overall this is a really nice model it's a shame on the decal but hey what are you going to do it, it is it is what it is now that's really cool i really like this one now comparing this it do, this does seem more substantial than the regular version of it we're going to check that out in a minute but let's put her on her stand and uh, we'll see how she fits and how she looks so there she is sits very firmly and confidently into the mount doesn't completely obscure the aft impulse so you kind of you get to see some of the nice geometry back there but a uh, kind of nice overhang so you have the very slender nacelles drifting off at the back but nice overhang of the prominent saucer section here as well so you have your uh bridge it's fairly horizontal there's a little bit of a lift to it but again with the display of this a lot of the weight is is central to it so it's it's pretty stable to be honest with you um and again the fact that you don't have any peg holes in this you get to see uh, a very naturally displayed ship which is pretty nice um so it looks cool the mounting is pretty much identical to the uh, regular version of it uh, some initial observations is the lack of aztec on the regular Shenzhou, which we have here. Um, that kind of patterning on the ventral and dorsal side of the saucer section as well, that doesn't seem to be present. There's more paint apps on the deflector dish that you will see. And um, again, when you, <laughs> I know that there's an error in the registry on the nacelles but you only have the graphic on the smaller version you don't actually have any text and uh, you don't have any plastic inserts for the impulse section that you do on the regular version so when you're comparing a special to a regular i think this is one off and errors and emissions aside i think this is one of the models where there actually is more detail on the sculpt there's a there's more prominent panel lines but primarily the extra size of the canvas there's more opportunities that they took advantage of for the paint applications more than anything so here we have the two of them so i know this is front of frame 
and it looks much, much bigger, but it is quite a bit bigger than the regular version. But take notice of the deflector and the Aztec in that we saw a little bit earlier on. It's a much kind of cleaner paint application on this. So it almost looks like, like a lower res picture. You don't have the purple accents on the deflector, on the dish itself. You don't have the Aztecing. You don't have the Aztecing on the nacelles or the pylons. You do the plastic inserts for the nacelles though, but you have like a purple, pinky, pinky purple, actually more pink really, um, inserts in here. My hand was making that out of focus. I do apologize. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, what I mentioned there a moment ago, it does look like a higher resolution image when you compare the two of them. And that's where the specials or like the Excel versions have their biggest opportunity. And sometimes that opportunity isn't uh, fully taken advantage of, which is a little bit of a shame. I want to center that a little bit there, to apologize. Um, but overall, I think this is a fab model. I'm gonna, this is gonna be the last time I mentioned it. The only real issue is the Mirror Universe uh, decal. I'm after noticing a little bit of a separation on this nacelle over here. No biggie. Um, it's the Mirror Universe uh, decal on the nacelles. That's really the only thing. Other than that, this is a fab model. Um, I think a nice companion piece with the special Discovery that we recently reviewed um as well so do check out that um love to hear your thoughts and opinions on both of these um but yeah that's pretty much it so let's uh let's wrap up the video uh by checking out the magazine shall we so here we have our smaller magazine um again we went through the primary points here nice graphic on it and uh again i'll just tip up here just so it's not being killed by some of the brightness uh, just one section we have designing, so we're focusing fully on the the genesis of this ship. First appearance, the Vulcan Hello, lost 23rd century in the Battle of the Binary Stars, and designed by John Eves, captained by Philippe Giorgio. Some nice close-up shots there as well. Fab art. I, just, I love, I just love John, uh, John Eves' aesthetic. Inspired by the explains of the 1940s, Johnny's came up with a starship that looked very different to the US, to the Enterprise of the original series, complete with angular nacelles and a bridge located on the underside. Angular nacelles, we talked about that in the special issue Star Trek Discovery and, and Brian Fuller's insistence there. Um, very novel approach on the bridge though, um, a ventral bridge, which is pretty awesome. So concept illustrator Johnny Hughes overcame several challenges to design the distinctive looking starship. Um, so yeah, no, no better person, no better person. Some of the, some of the talent, well, all of the talent on the Star Trek Discovery is amazing. Um, Ryan Denning has, uh, he's hand in a lot of the, the modern ships, I believe. Um, so here we have some of the, you know, the traditional blue ink concepts which shows some of the elements that we would have seen in uh, ships gone by. Kind of reminds me of the, the uh, remember the original design for the, the hollow ship? It wasn't as sleek and beautiful as this, but um, yeah, you can kind of see that it's like flipped over. Um, but yeah, a lot of the bare bones were there in the ship, and some of these elements carried over into uh, some other ships in the fleet as well right into detail on the nacelles, ventral bridge section as well. So very, very cool. Huge one to work goes into this. So this design was fleshed out very, uh, very much actually. Um, so when a design showed promise, Eves would work up a more detailed version of the render. So again, you have like a triple buzzard array. You have that dorsal uh, deflector star drive section that uh, the Shenzhou would kind of have. Um, almost kind of like the Franklin style, early discovery style detailing along the central uh, ventral section as well. Looks like the registry was locked in and the name was locked in fairly early as well, which is cool. And then again, we have the issues of design kind of bulking it up, going into uh, more detailed Photoshop 
in here as well. That looks very cool, very kind of hanger orientated uh, on that side, which is interesting. A lot of different details in here as well. So you have the production uh, manager here, Todd Chernowski. And again, some very, very clean line art. A little bit of different coloring here. And you can see the registry of the ship uh, coming along the, the, the bow of it rather than its final placement over here. But you do see that in some of these different renders. You see the shuttle bay opening on that one. Pretty cool. So um, here we have Thomas Pringle coming in as well. So we saw Thomas Pringle in the last review kind of putting some of the very unique hull markings on it. But uh, here we have a plethora. Kind of, kind of like what we ended up with. Very TOS. Kind of maybe a more modernized TOS TMP style here as well. So uh, very interesting on that. So although the basic design was left, uh, it continued to evolve with other members of the department chipped in for passes. So again, exploring different color schemes. So again, the collaborative nature of it. Uh, interesting kind of Azteking going along here as well. Looks like a smaller version of the Shenzhou, much bigger bridge compartment. Bit of a different kind of cutaway. You can kind of see the scale was changing a little bit throughout. Some great content in this magazine, actually. Very similar to the content that we saw in the Discovery magazine. Oh, a real uh, broken Shenzhou over here as well. Now we're getting into 3D modeling of it. Close up on the deflect the bridge, I mean. Uh, I love that bridge, such, such a cool idea. It's as equal, do you know, in space, it's as equally vulnerable on the ventral side as it is on the, the dorsal side because, again, uh, three dimensional space and all that jazz. So that's cool. So we close out on the back graphic and uh, we'll look to wrap up the video, shall we? So, folks, that's uh, the special version of the USS Shenzhou in all her glory. Um, very curious to know what your thoughts and opinions are of the contents of the magazine, the ship itself, and uh, the comparison between the Discovery Collection version versus the special issue version of the Shenzhou. Um, yeah, so let me know in the comments below. Uh, again, massive shout out to Hero Collector for sending this over. Gives me the opportunity to do a review for you fine folks. But uh, listen, as I said, I think it's pretty understandable at this stage. They don't hold any editorial on these videos, so they see them uh, when you see them. So my thoughts and opinions are my own. And um, as much as I do thank them, this is really all possible down to you folks as well. So thanks for your support by checking out these videos massive shout out to the patreons supporting the channel as well you're directly uh in you're directly impacting my ability to uh positively improve the channel and continue to uh, drive these reviews some uh channel news coming in the near future uh are about another series of uh, videos that will be coming over the next couple of years wink wink uh but listen we lent it for today on that do check out the description box below for all of the playlists of the previously reviewed models and uh, all the social media links as well as here collector details and some fan sites uh, to share in the community. Um, I've been your local Irish Trekkie. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay sane during these times that we live in and uh, I will see you in the next model review video. Take it easy and goodbye.